Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Bosco, the founder of the Salesian Society, a teacher and guardian to the young. In this Mass, let us pray for our young people and those dedicated to their education and formation. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist let us humbly call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest, St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. An informant came to David with the report 
The children of Israel have transferred their loyalty to Absalom. At this, David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, Up, let us take flight, or none of us will escape from Absalom. Live quickly, lest he hurry and overtake us. Then visit disaster upon us and put the city to the sword. As David went up the Mount of Olives, he wept without ceasing. His head was covered, and he was walking barefoot. All those, those who were with him also had their heads covered and were weeping as they went. As David was approaching Bahurim, a man named Shimei, the son of Gera, of the same clan as Saul's family, was coming out of the place, cursing as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the king's officers, even though all the soldiers, including the royal guard, were on David's right and on his left. Shimei was saying as he cursed, Away, away, you murderous and wicked man! The Lord has required you for all the bloodshed in the family of Saul, in whose stead you became king, and the Lord has given over the kingdom to your son Absalom. And now you suffer ruin because you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over, please, and lop off his head. But the king replied, What business is it of mine or of yours, sons of Zeruiah, that he curses? Suppose the Lord has told him to, cur to curse David, who then will dare to say, Why are you doing this? Then the king said to Abishai and to all his servants, If my own son, who came forth from my loins, is seeking my life, how much more might this Benjaminite do so? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will look upon my affliction and make it up with me with benefits for the curses he is uttering his day this day. David and his men continued on the road while Shimei kept abreast of them on the hillside all the while cursing and throwing stones and dirt as he went. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, rise up and save me. Lord, rise up and save me. O oh Lord, how many are my adversaries? Many rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no salvation for him in Lord, God. Lord, rise up and save me. But you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory. You lift up my head when I call out to the Lord. He answers me from his holy mountain. Lord, rise up and save me. When I lie down in sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. Lord, rise up and save me. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine. Let us enter them. And he led them. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident into the town and throughout the hill country. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the, wa the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not really surprising that Jesus was able to heal the man possessed with an unclean spirit. Jesus is the Son of God. And as such, he has power to heal and to cast out evil from anyone possessed by it. What is really surprising is the reaction of the people after Jesus healed 
the man possessed with an unclean spirit. After Jesus healed the man, the evil spirits made a request to Jesus. Ang lakas naman ng loob ng mga masasamang espiritong ito. Nakiusap pa kay Jesus. At ang pakiusap nila na huwag silang palayasin, kundi papuntahin na lamang sila doon sa mga baboy na naruroon sa bayang iyon. And so when the evil spirits entered the swine, the swine rushed into the sea and drowned. More than 2,000 swine. And because of this, the people asked Jesus to leave their district. Pinaalis nila si Jesus. Should they not have been happy that Jesus healed the man possessed by the evil spirits? Should they not have asked Jesus to stay longer and perform more miracles for them? By asking Jesus to leave, were they saying that the swine are more important than Jesus? The, prob the reason probably why they asked Jesus to leave was because Jesus was upsetting the way things are. They are so used to the condition of that man that they already lived with that condition and they have already get used to it. They have been used to the evil present in their midst, that evil no longer bothers them, that evil no longer matters. What mattered more were the swine, their business, and their livelihood. Kaya hindi nila matanggap ang ginawa ni Jesus. Mas pinili nilang paalisin si Jesus kaysa manatili sa kanila kasi ginugulo ni Jesus ang mga bagay na kinasanayan na nila. My dear brothers and sisters, are we not so different from the people in this place that Jesus encountered have we been so used to evil in our midst that evil no longer bothers us, that we are no longer disturbed by the evil around us? Baka katulad ng mga tao sa ating ibanghelyo ngayon, kinasanayan na natin ang masama, kaya hindi na tayo nababahala at hindi na rin tayo natatakot sa masama. Kinasanayan na natin ang masama, kaya yung masama pinagmumukha ng mabuti. At kung ano pa yung mabuti, yun ang pinalalabas na masama. Baka kinasanayan na natin ang kasinungalingan, kaya yung kasinungalingan na ang pinaniniwala ang totoo. At kung ano pa yung totoo, yun ang palalabasin na kasinungalingan. Baka masyado na tayong nasanay sa mali, kaya yung mga taong gumagawa ng mali, sila pa ang bida. At yung mga taong ipinaglalaban ang tama, sila pa ang kalaban at kontrabida. Have we been so used to evil that we would rather ask goodness to leave because we are already 
so used to evil in our midst. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the memorial of St. John Bosco, a priest who lived in the 19th century. St. John Bosco was so concerned about young people who got detained because of juvenile delinquency. Once in prison, he observed that these young people would learn about crimes, and so they will become worse. So what John Bosco did was to dedicate his ministry to the education and the formation of the young by teaching them and forming them according to the Christian faith. By doing this, John Bosco was preventing these young people from being exposed to evil and providing them with a brighter future. Ayaw ni St. John Bosco na ang mga kabataan mababad sa masama dahil masasanay sa masama. Tinuruan niya ng kabutihan upang sila ay magkaroon ng mas maliwanag na kinabukasan na malayo sa masama. My dear brothers and sisters, God does not want us to live with evil. And God does not want us to get used to evil. God comes to drive evil away so that we may live in goodness and holiness. Like David in our first reading today, who was criticized by Shimei and welcomed the criticism hurled against him. Let us allow Jesus to disturb us, especially if we are already so used to evil. Hilingin natin kay Jesus na bulabugin ang ating mga konsensya lalong-lalo na kung ang ating konsensya ay nasanay ng mamuhay sa masama. And through the power of Jesus, through the powerful name of Jesus, may each one of us have the guts and the courage to drive evil and all its forms from our society, and from our world. Please stand. Gathered together in Christ to conquer all evil, let us come confidently to the Father with our prayerful intentions. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father, the bishops, priests, and deacons may help us to remain strong in our faith in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that Christian believers may have the courage to speak boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who are hardened in sin may be touched by the Holy Spirit of the Lord to repent and change their ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may render support especially to those who are embittered by suffering and pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may be brought safely 
safely home to the company of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your abundant love for us. Establish your authority within us and be our companion on the road of life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed John Bosco so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Bosco, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Bosco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May partaking of the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed John Bosco, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>